Welcome, adventurers, to a new segment on this channel, Adventure Route Reviews. I've been doing a fair amount of traveling and riding lately, and as always, I'm either riding someone else's GPX route or building one myself. So I felt it'd be fun to promote these adventure routes by analyzing them in five different categories and levels. The adventure itself, two, the scenery and the landscapes, three, the challenge of the riding, four, the rally, if it's a rally, or the potential to become a rally, and five, beer. While there are some routes that I've ridden in the past that I would love to go back and review in this manner, it's best to put the past behind me and start with my most recent ride, the infamous Monongahela Adventure Tour. The IMAT, as it is affectionately called, was created by the infamous Dr. Brian Holmes about three years ago and it spans a large area in and around the Monongahela National Park in northeastern West Virginia. And the route was just featured in the July edition of the Roadrunner magazine, which is where we found it and didn't hesitate to plan a journey down to West Virginia. The route is a cloverleaf style, cloverleaf tour that's based in the town of Elkins. And you leave the hotel there and you ride out to the route and then you make your way back to the same hotel each night, which is a great plus for any adventure route. There are three legs, two of which are 180 miles long, and the third is only 130 miles but features two long optional challenge legs. I'll get to those shortly. And I should note that we did not ride leg one of this route. The Roadrunner author made it seem like it was the easiest of the three, so we skipped it for time. Let's get into it. My adventure rating is based on the feeling you get when you aren't quite sure exactly where you are, where you're headed, and what you might run into next. And for this route, and being pretty for unfamiliar with West Virginia in general, all of those points were pretty valid. Riding along the mountainsides, you might break into an incredible vista, dip down into a rocky valley, open up into a picturesque homestead, or find yourself riding in a cloud. And this made it seem like a true adventure, especially for out-of-staters like us. The unincorporated towns crop up in between mountain peaks, and the West Virginia railroad system is still a proud part of their culture in the area. The Cass Railroad train was a very cool thing to see in action. <laughs> with a soda fountain and a general store from the turn of the 20th century. Along the route, we rode up on deer, turkeys, cows, and sheep in the road. We also spoke to some local dual sport enthusiasts who weren't quite sure about all of the adventurists who were taking advantage of their backyard. Based on intrigue alone, I would score this route's adventure at 8 out of 10. It was pretty exhilarating. John Denver was right. West Virginia is the mountain mama. I mean, it's truly incredible. There are no straight roads. Everything is cut into the mountains, which seems to bring tranquility to everything in this area of the world. The day two route took us to the top of Snowshoe Mountain, a great skiing destination. And if you're willing to hike a few steps, head to the observation tower on Spruce Knob. The wind made it a little unnerving, but the views were breathtaking. For an adventure motorcyclist on the East Coast, this is what you live for, up down, winding around peaks, crossing streams, and the occasional cattle gap. Worth mentioning that you should try to hit this route in early August. Early summer, June, July, seems to be rainy and wet. The water levels are high, and it looks like late summer is cool enough and dry enough. The landscape and sceneries are beautiful and varied. 9 out of 10. This ride is not particularly challenging in a traditional sense. I mean, the main routes are very well maintained with a couple of rough runs. But overall, the pavement is brilliantly smooth, and the gravel roads are fast. I actually recommend that you bring your biggest displacement machine. For you 1250 riders, this route is a blast. For you V-Strom, Versus, and other not so adventuring machines, bring them. This route is perfect for those machines. If you're riding a dual sport, you'll need the seat concepts modification. There's a fair amount of pavement riding, and even the dirt roads are still sit down worthy. I brought my Husqvarna FE and missed my Scrambler 1200 as my butt was throbbing in discomfort even with the seat concepts upgrade. And the real challenge is curves. There's no chance to turn your brain off on this route. The road is constantly changing in pitch and the switchbacks are pretty serious. For an inexperienced rider, this could be a bit nervy, but with the right mindset, it's so much fun. Here's the disclaimer. If you bring your big bike and you're riding by yourself or maybe with one other, avoid the challenge loops. These are not big bike friendly. Just check them out.
For these sections, and we rode only one of them, I was happy to have my FE450. Some of the climbs were hilariously challenging with stream crossings being the only stress-free part of the loop. At some point, I lost my axle nut and you can actually hear my back tire grinding against the chain guard. Somehow, I made it out without losing my axle and my rear tire. And trail side fixes are always a fun mark of a good adventure. If you're riding with a large crew, you can probably work through some of the climbs and descents together, and you'll almost inevitably drop your big, expensive bike. If you're okay with that, go for it. Including the challenge loops, I would rate this 7 out of 10 on challenge. Without the challenge loops, it's a 3 out of 10. If this adventure route were already a rally, I would of course rate the rally itself. But in this case, the IMAT is not a rally, but it's primed for one. Every good rally needs a solid hub and Elkins is perfect. The Holiday Inn Express is owned by an ex-Enduro rider. He's built a moto pavilion on site with covered motorcycle parking, a grill, and a shed with tools. How cool is that? And it's a block away from Main Street, which features Beander's, a solid American bar, CJ Maggie's restaurant, and Mamma Mia's pizza and pasta. It's also a short walk to Scotty's Diner for breakfast and coffee. The Go Mart is next door for convenience and fuel, and there's a power sports dealer on Highway 219 for any fixes you might need. They close at 2 on Saturdays. What's up with that? So if Brian Holmes is ready to turn this thing into the next great East Coast rally, I think it can be done. 10 out of 10. After every day of riding, we finish with a boot beer. A cold one before you take off your boots to celebrate a successful day in the dirt. So we look for local breweries or pubs in the area that might offer such a thing, and we found two. Big Timber Brewery's Tap Room on Davis Street in Elkins is awesome. It's a surprisingly superior brewery for such a small town, and the tap room on a Friday night was well attended. And the other spot was Smoke on the Water, a barbecue place with an excellent patio and bar. The food was good too, but the beer selection was spot on. Since Elkins is the home of Big Timber Brewery, I rate the beer selection for this route 8 out of 10. We're convinced that this is a hidden gem among ADV riders, and you really need to go and experience it for yourself. Frankly, the Roadrunner article doesn't really do it justice. I'm going to post the website for the route down below, and of course you can leave a comment and ask any questions that you have about this particular ride. Um, and for the next couple of seconds, why don't you enjoy some of the footage that I got from this particular route. Thanks. That's something. 